Thank you. Mr. Nelson? <coughs> Thank you. I uh, don't have much of a voice, so I'm trying to keep this short and succinct. It is difficult to be a representative of the people. When you're elected to office, I took that term, representative, very seriously. I represent people that wanted me to voice their desires in government. Many times, those desires actually can conflict, sometimes with my personal feelings, as uh, uh, Mr. Shane has pointed out. Uh, those desires sometimes are difficult for me to override with my own uh, desire to do good. But when I have heard from the constituents or the public as to what they would like to see, then I represent them. I understand the complaint that has been uh, uh, levied against me. I guess the problem I have is how, as a representative, the expectation is to be fulfilled to represent individuals in your district. And that was the thing that I was trying to lay out in my discussion uh, to you folks, uh, that I did not have a financial, a direct financial uh, benefit from this. In fact, I was advised, and I would have done so anyway, recused myself from voting for myself. I did not nominate myself. I was nominated by another council member. I feel that uh, uh, if that was the desire of the council to have another nominee on there, that that was to be one of the selections to be voted on. I did not vote on myself, but I did vote on the other nominees. I was representing the people that voted for me, many of the people in this audience, that wanted their voice heard on the council. My doing so, <coughs> excuse me, pardon the pitch, my doing so had no effect upon my benefit. For if I had voted in favor of an individual, other than myself, which I abstained from, and they had gotten the four votes as required by our uh, bylaws and charters, then they would have won and I would not have been in this position. Those that I did not vote for had nothing more than an abstention for they would not have gotten on if they got four negatives or three negatives because we only had six. So it was nothing more than an abstention for I had no effect whether they got on or not if they could not garner the four votes unless that I'm being asked that I should be looking at changing my vote. I did agree with one of the council members, Councilman Brenner, sitting here today, that this is probably not the best process for selecting a council member that decides to quit two meetings before the end of the term. But unfortunately, we were put into a position on a short notice to make a decision as to who would replace that person before the next council took the positions, their positions, the newly elected ones. So, in brief, I, I try to do the very best in representing the public that I serve in the votes that I cast for and against as a representative of the people. Now, I don't want to put words that this is integrity or this is uh, duty. This is, these are commitments on my part, but it is also required by law. I am required to represent, represent the public. I guess in the summary I would just state, <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice already, uh, I would be very concerned on how we determine representation. If we start slicing and dicing what is ethically legal to represent, we are going to diminish what we have established not only in this country and this state but this county but our very form of government when we start slicing and dicing who can vote because we all all of us sitting here have interests we have indirect interest in the outcomes whether it's taxes zoning municipal waste water resources we all have interests and many times those affect us 
more so than probably the others, and that's your job as a commission, is to decide. Is this the time where we start this up looking at slicing and dicing representation as an ethical issue? I agree. One should not obtain a special privilege to gain special benefit, and I recused myself from that vote. I did not want to be responsible for deciding myself as an individual should I gain something, but I will refuse to put down the right to represent the constituents of my district. Thank you. Mr. Roth. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Nelson had no statutory obligation to accept the nomination, and I could find no statutory obligation to vote if he chose to abstain. Uh, uh, I, I made what notes I could. Uh, I heard about desire, conflict, expectation. I heard about intent, the desire to do the right thing, to resolve <coughs> conflicts. Mr. Nelson's obligation to the statutory law, every other expectation he has yields to his statutory obligation as a councilman. Whatever expectations his constituents might have, have to go through the filter of statutory law. He had a statutory obligation once he became nominated of his own free will. He had a statutory obligation to not vote that that every other expectation that might have been uh, on his shoulders yielded to that expectation. And I just repeat that um, that intent doesn't enter into it. The decision you make today will inform the actions of future council members. You will decide whether or not the actions documented in this complaint were a mistake or if they were a precedent. The county council can decide for itself whether it needs to change the code of ethics. But what no member of council gets to decide is whether or not the statutes that make up the existing code of ethics have been violated. That decision is yours. You have to make it. As you deliberate, please consider one question. Would this conduct be acceptable if any other council member did? The decision isn't really about Mr. Nelson, it's about the office he holds and every person who will serve as custodian of that office in the years to come. I have presented the facts and the record and the law, and I assert I have met my burden of proof that Mr. Nelson's conduct occurred and that it is a violation of the Code of Ethics. I'm not asking the Commission to impose any sanctions or penalties on Mr. Nelson. I just want someone to admit that what Mr. Nelson did was a mistake, a mistake that must not be repeated. I ask the Commission to please spare Mr. Nelson a civil penalty if, if you see fit. He got flawed legal advice. Every member of council was struggling to make a difficult decision that night. They were working against the clock and against some of the county's most poorly defined, poorly understood, and rarely used policies and procedures. The best remedy here may not be vengeance. The best remedy here may not be punishment. The best remedy here may just be delivering bad news. Tell Mr. Nelson that he made a mistake and that he has to live with the fact that he made a mistake, and that you, the Ethics Commission, don't have the luxury of pretending that he didn't make a mistake just because you think that he's not a bad guy and that he meant well. Am I the only person in this room who has had to swallow his pride and admit to making a mistake? I don't know of anyone who's ever acquired a taste for their own pride. I know I haven't. But I've never had to swallow a fatal dose of my own pride, and neither will Mr. Nelson. And I thank the commission for hearing my complaint. Thank you.